So I'm Jake Burkett from Grayling Games, and I'm going to talk about the long tail of indie games. So I went indie in 2005, and I've been making games a lot longer than that. And I've got a lot of sales data accumulated over those uh, years. Yes, that's perfect. And so tonight I'm going to talk about that. So here's a bunch of games I've made. I've made uh, casual downloadable games for PC and Mac. Um, casual games aimed at sort of old ladies that live in Florida who send me pictures of their dogs. And, um, you know, they love these sort of games and they've kept me going all these years uh, and allow me to do stuff like make free kind of games in my spare time. So I've made about 20 sort of mini games at game jams and things. I also did um, one game a month uh, last year, which was a great initiative. And if you can do something like that or more crazily one game a week, then I advise you try that to boost your skills. So on to um, the first slide. This was my game, my first commercial game. It was a Christmas-based match three game with uh, programmer art, stock music, and I even used the Comic Sans font. Um, obviously, uh, you know, that had an effect upon sales. Um, it wasn't very successful. We can find out here that it's, it's made less than $2,000 over eight years. So, yeah. Um, not really very good, but it only cost $170 to make, so at least I wasn't sort of hugely out of pocket. And it sold more than one copy, which is um, an achievement of sorts. Uh, how long did it take? It took me about 250 hours to make on top of my base engine, um, and that works out about £3.90 an hour, which my son wouldn't even mow the lawn for that sort of money. <laughs> and here I was supporting my family with this game. Um, so on the surface, that does look like a fail, um, but it's not really a fail because uh, I learned a lot about making games, I learned a lot about the market, and the fact it had sold any at all um, made me realize that I can sort of keep going and improve, uh, and that's what I've been doing all these years. Um, so uh, I actually have to waffle for a few seconds here. Blah, 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 blah. Um, here we go. Come on. There we go. Right, so here's a, a crap long tail. This is eight years of sales. The important thing to realize is that it is still selling even now, eight, eight years later, okay? Not very many, but it's still selling. So what if I made a game that was significantly better than that and it also had an equally long tail. Well, conveniently, I did exactly that. Um, <laughs> this is Holiday Bonus. It, it, I paid an artist and got some nice graphics. I paid a musician, got some themed music. Spent a lot longer on the game, adding in, um, you know, power-ups and bonuses and special effects. And it did a lot better. You know, the, these ladies with the dogs in Florida loved it. And um, we can look at how well that sold. So that sold 25,000 units to date. It's made about $80,000. It only cost $2,000 to make, that's the art and music and stuff. Uh, so that's a 40 times return on investment, to use some business speak, sorry about that. Um, but that was definitely a success. Um, and now we can sort of look at how long it took me to make. It, it was about six super intense weeks where I crunched. Um, and so far, that's working out at £104 an hour, which is way better than £3.90 an hour. And it keeps going up. So every year, every, there's a Christmas, funnily enough, and the game comes <laughs> around again um, and makes more money. So here's the long tail. Now you can see every Christmas is a big spike. And more recently, there's a lot of activity, and that's because of a whole bunch of stuff I've done, which I'll, I'll talk about in a minute. But that's the beauty of seasonal games is you can get them re-promoted every year and new opportunities uh, come along. Um, when I look at that in aggregate per year, you can see, look at the first two years, look at how bad they were. And back then I was like, oh dear, this game didn't do very well. Um, you know, can I carry on? Can I survive as an indie? Um, but, you know, you can look at the far end and see, hopefully the people over there can actually see the far end. This is the most important side. Um, <laughs> So in the first year, it only sold 1,000 units, you know, and, and I think a lot of you may be, have made a game recently, you're looking at your first year's sales and going, oh my God, um, can I survive? Hopefully you're in a better situation than that, but if you're in that situation, bear in mind uh, the long tail can be um, much, much different. Like only 6% of the, the, the revenue from the first year is, is the total. So yeah, I got it on new portals because the markets change. I got the game localized and put out uh, in multiple languages. I made a gold version with new levels and a fancy gold label slapped on it, <laughs> uh, which I put out, which people love that as well, anything gold. 
Um, so here's another long tail. Now this is a more typical long tail. It's a non-seasonal game. Big spike at the beginning. That was a big spike once. And it tails off. And then here, more action at the end because I did all the kind of re-promotion stuff. And that giant spike is because I made a mobile deal. Okay, so weird stuff can happen. That's six years after it came out, it came out on mobile. Um, so it sold a similar amount of money to the other game, cost a similar amount of money to make, a um, bit more actually. Um, I also have another game called Spring Bonus. It's a spring themed game. Uh, and that's done similarly well, but in a shorter time. And that's my aim now is to kind of make the sort of money these games have made in shorter times. Most recently I made Spooky Bonus, Halloween themed. <laughs> Uh, it's, it made gross $300,000 in the first four months, of which I've got about a third of from the casual porters because they give you crap royalties. But look at the rest of the graph. What's going to happen in the next year, two years, five years, ten years? Well, due to all the data that I've got, maybe something quite exciting. So these are six of my games, excluding any consultancy work and contract work that I've done. And you can see over the eight years or so, look at how crap my first year was, then there was a sort of lull in the middle. And gradually it's been building up, and this last year has been pretty good, and I'd like to see where the graph goes beyond this. So uh, that's the conclusion of my talk, is being indie is a long-term game. Um, you know, don't just stake everything on a big hit because you've seen a talk at GDC. Um, make sure that you actually build your business up and you stick at it and you learn and you just don't give in. So that's it. Thank you very much. Wow.